Hello everyone, this new video is inspired by the win that Evgeny Tomashevsky uh, made against Maxim Vashielagraf at the Tbilisi Grand Prix tournament where this very unusual position have been seen. Three light pieces were fighting a lonely rook. Okay, it wasn't like that at the beginning. First of all, uh, Maxim had four pawns together with the rook, but one by one Tomashevsky managed to take them all and he reached not this position, but a very similar one. The one that you have at the moment is uh, between two young players, Laura Unuk playing with the white pieces against Alexander Dmitrievich, and it was played in 2014, uh, roughly a year prior to this game. In total, there are nine games in my mega base which are featuring this end game, um, and in most of the cases, uh, the stronger side won. So technically speaking, this position should be a win. The two bishops are too strong and they're usually winning. If one of those bishops was replaced by a knight, then we are going to have a theoretically draw position, as uh, this rook is capable of sacrificing itself for the remaining one, for the remaining bishop, and two lonely knights cannot obviously checkmate the king, unless that king desires that badly. Okay, but how to win these positions? Well, I should say in advance that two of those games still ended in a draw, so uh, the stronger side didn't know exactly what to do. There are two basic dangers. First, da first danger is that you don't know how to checkmate with a bishop and a knight versus a lonely king. If you don't know how, then check it out. This is mandatory and uh, it will happen at least once in your life. Well, and uh, the other danger is actually what happened in this game. Laura Nook, she played the move bishop e7. This is one thing that you have to do very carefully. Whenever you're still mating the opponent's king, you have to think twice and you have to check all the checks, all the captures. Here she didn't do so and after rook takes a5, the game was instantly draw. As if the king takes, this bishop is hanging and if the bishop takes, we have uh, the main defensive, defensive resor resource for the weaker side, uh, that's the stalemate. So try to avoid the stalemate and try to chase uh, the king in the proper way. How to chase it? Well, here it is. First of all, we try to put the bishops on adjacent files and we are trying to force this king to go um, into one of the corners. Ideally, this corner in this particular case, because it's almost there. So say that he tries to escape with king d8, we have a check. This is one way that the bishops are cooperating. King has to go uh, towards this edge, and then we go bishop to c4 with the idea bishop b5. We are placing the bishops next to each other so that they can take as much air of the opponent's king as possible, and then they are moving um, as a team. They are moving, they are switching the diagonals, and slowly but surely we will put this king into the corner. These two pieces, in that case, the king and the knight, they are supporting the bishops, not giving a chance to the king to escape in this direction. By the way, the knight is already optimally placed and it is, and the king too. They are taking away the squares and uh, whenever the king goes into the corner, uh, we will know that he has nowhere to go. So what happened next in the game was, might happen in the game. Sorry, excuse me, this didn't happen in the game, but it can happen. It's rook b1. And now we can already use uh, some small tactics, bishop to b5 check. Um, knowing that the capture is just bad. There is a fork knight to this six check. Uh, but if you are not having tactics, you can also go king e6. And you can prepare this. Uh, that's unstoppable. So no later you'll be capable of doing it if you're careful. But okay, let's use the little tricky check. It's always fun to use some tricks even in the end game whenever we're winning like that. Um, of course, black is not forced to take. He can go king to f8. Now we go bishop c6, bishop was already hanging, and after rook b2, move like rook b2, we put the second bishop on the adjacent diagonal next to the one here. If black tries to defend with rook d2, then we have a check, and then the other bishop is coming on c6. It's On e6 it's as simple as that, so the king is already into the corner. I think that the best defense for the rook here would be to stay behind the knight and to try to create some problems uh, not to give a chance to this knight 
to deliver uh, checks and uh, for the king to maneuver and to open space for the bishops so that they can finish the game. But okay, we are happy already the king has to go uh, in the corner. And that's the optimal setup, by the way, whenever you're ch checkmating with a knight and a bishop. You're taking uh, the squares from, from both sides of the board. The king is helping on the light squares, the knight and the bishop, they are completing the box. Here we have one more bishop to do the job. And then I think the easiest way and the easiest when is to go bishop e4, loading the gun, preparing various discovered checks. When black can defend in two ways, he can try to escape with the king. First of all, king g8, to which we can go king g6. By the way, please note how these bishops are helping not only in the attack but in the defense too. Once that the king moves to g6, we are threatening check and checkmate. Um, and if the king goes here, we can already deliver checkmate by by force with checks like that. Check, check, and on king f8. Okay, this is a silent move, but this time the sacrifice on f5 is no longer working as there is bishop d6 checkmate. And the other sacrifice, the sacrifice wouldn't work, wouldn't work neither because we can go knight g3 and whenever he sacrifices, this king has d7 square. But whenever we are doing this, do not forget to be very, very careful whenever we are still mating the king and to check everything really very nicely. Uh, if you don't want to allow him this check, this stalemate ideas, there is no need to give a check in this situation. A faster way to deliver the checkmate is to bring the bishop on f8 with the unstoppable threat to check and checkmate. And the, the king also has enough air and it can move left and right, there will be no stalemate. So obviously this defense shouldn't work with the king going to g8. And then the other possible defense is that he keeps the rook on the fl whenever he keeps the rook on the f while we go king f7 again we're opening some air for the bishops and next maneuver is also very nice and uh, worth memorizing the bishop goes via e5 or e7 to f6 which unleashes the knight now the bishop is helping the king but at the same time it took away a little bit of the air of the black king and we are threatening various discovered attacks namely 9g3 and 9d3 at the moment to win the rook Again, let me warn you about the possible stalemate ideas. Bishop g7 here would be a very bad mistake. Not for not for the stalemate idea this time, excuse me, but for another idea. The idea rook f4. And since this bishop has to defend the knight all the time, we have a, a rook which is always attacking the bishop. The bishop has to stay on this diagonal. And the rook will constantly attack it. The knight cannot... Um, move, it cannot do discover check to win the rook and that would be a positional draw. Check it out if you're not sure. But if we do bishop f6, if we stick to the plan, everything is going to be fine. Say if the rook moves away, rook e1 tries to attack the bishop, now we have knight g3 check, followed by bishop g6, this time checkmate is inevitable, and if he sacrifices the rook rook e7, we just take it with the king and he has uh, he has something to take that's not stalemate, but that's the only moment in which we're bringing our bishop that close. Uh, and finally, if he goes rook f4, if he sticks to the fl, then we can do bishop c2. And this time, attacking the bishop will lead. Uh, sorry, if, uh, if the rook moves away on the fourth rank, we can do this check, followed by this surprising check and this check. And that forces black to give up the rook with rook g4. And then all we need to do is not to, to make a move which will lead to a stalemate. For example, a move like knight h6 would be the fastest win. And the two bishops are already there to deliver the checkmate. So that would be easy win. Say here, here, king h8, semi waiting move, check and checkmate. That's easy. Whenever the king is close to the edge of the port, it's always stalemate. Well, if he does rook to f2, if he keeps the rook still on the fl, then thanks to this discovered check and this discovered and this double check, uh, double threat, excuse me, this check double threat, we're winning the rook. And after that, that's easy. So basically, this is it. The two main things, try to keep the bishops 
on the edges and diagonals. And this is exactly what Tomaszewski did in the game, by the way. Check it out if you didn't, that's a great game. You won't be sorry. And uh, the next thing, whenever you're bringing your piece closer to the enemy king, watch out for the stalemate ideas. That would be everything from this video. Thank you for your attention.